Sproink is the first true big boss you'll encounter in Yokai Watch Blasters at the end of Chapter 2. This advanced Sproink battle guide will cover all of his attacks and their properties, Sproink's weakness, the items he drops, and their purposes, and Yokai that I recommend using against him. If this guide helps you out, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Anyone who subscribes can enter to win a free physical or digital copy of Yokai Watch Blasters, Red Cat Core, or White Dog Squad your choice by clicking the link in the description. I'm going to make a guide like this one for every single big boss in the game, so you don't want to miss out on those, other video guides, and daily live streams where I play with you featuring rare yokai giveaways. The battle with Sproink starts as soon as you enter the field. Head towards the Black Wisp on your map to engage him. Blossom Heights is full of tight, winding streets, and Sproink's hurt boxes are quite large. I'd normally suggest baiting the enemy into a more open location in a situation like this, but you're honestly out of luck here. Stay alert and make use of the space you have, because I can't guarantee the AI will. They're... really stupid. During this first phase, Sproink launches an endless assault on you. There is almost zero time between the end of one attack and the start of another, so weave in your own attacks between his and don't get too comfortable button mashing. It's better to get in one attack than run away than to try and get in two and get damaged because of it. As a big boss, Sproink can output some decent damage, and this fight is long. I can't recommend bringing a healer enough. I brought my boy Sandma along with me here, but you're better off using Hungramp since you'll soon receive a love packed rice ball to evolve him into Hungorge. Speaking of rice balls, I highly suggest bringing two of them as your two items into battle so you can heal even more. Sproink has a few special moves at his disposal here. The good thing about big bosses is that they announce all of their attacks as soon as they start them up on the right side of the screen. Keep an eye on there for a cut-in with their attack's name so you know it's coming your way. The first attack we'll look at is Sproink's Pork Drop. He has a quick startup animation for around a sixth of a second where he bends down and drops his arms. As soon as he jumps into the air, he announces his attack on the right side of the screen. During this time, the Hurt Box for Pork Drop is displayed on the ground as a pulsating orange circle. You need to get out of this circle within the next 1.3 seconds or you'll get hit by Pork Drop. Falling from the sky isn't that easy though, and Sproink will need to take around the next 1.5 seconds to stand back up. While he's in the air, try taking advantage of his absence to charge up a charge attack. If you don't have one, use the Hurt Box warning to position yourself just outside of it, then let loose on Sproink with an attack or two as he falls. Get out of there quick though, since once he recovers, he'll launch another attack. Sproink attacks in a 3 attack cycle. First, he uses Pork Drop. Then, he uses Roast Pork. For this attack, Sproink takes a sixth of a second to deploy a warning for its hurt box while leaning back to charge it up. He announces his attack, then takes over a second to charge before unleashing a fan of flames in front of him. You can run around behind him and wail on him this whole time, and I highly suggest you do so since the actual roast pork attack lasts for about 3 whole seconds, which means Sproink is vulnerable for 4 if you factor in the charge up. Just avoid his front and smack him up. If you're having trouble against this attack, don't forget that it's fire element. Both Jibanyan and Komasan are fire element, and it's pretty likely that you're using at least one of them. Yokai resists the element that they are, so swap to one of them and just tank the roast pork like a man if you can't avoid it. After roast pork, Sproink will use his final attack for this phase, Bucket Bash. For this attack, Sproink chooses a target, turns towards them, then runs until he reaches them and smashes with both his buckets. It doesn't matter who his target is, if you're in range of his buckets, you'll get hit. If all four members of your team are grouped up, this can potentially be devastating. The idiot computers won't listen to you, so treat boss battles in this game like a high school chemistry lab. Leave your classmates to struggle with putting their goggles on as you work that Bunsen burner yourself. And what was possibly the most brain dead move I have ever seen in any class, someone once shattered an extremely hot test tube by trying to rinse it out with ice cold water. That's a snotzel on move if I've ever seen one. He got the boot real fast after this mission. Once you deplete Sproink's health bar, he makes like a Kingdom Hearts boss and reveals he actually has a second one waiting for you. But you can't do your thing on that one until he goes into the bathhouse. That's not to say you want him to go into the bathhouse though. As he runs towards it, give him every attack you've got. Every time you hit him, he has a chance to drop Oni Orbs of all different sizes, even extra large Oni Orbs. It's super sweet. There's a bit of hit stun on every attack you launch on him when he's running away here, so try and stun lock him if you can. I made a ton of Oni Orbs during this part. 
Since he's basically a walking target, take this as an opportunity to charge up your ultimate move, then use it on him once you enter the bathhouse. When you enter the bathhouse, the camera perspective will change into one very familiar to Snack World fans. Smash that lock on camera button on the upper left corner of the bottom screen and begin your assault on Sproink's final form. Sproink's got his original three moves from earlier, but now his attack pattern is more random, and he's got a few new tricks up his rough cotton sleeves. His first new attack is Hogwash. He takes one and a half seconds to reach into his... You know what? Let's not think about where he procures that sudsy bar of soap before sliding it across the floor in a straight line directly targeting one of your team members. It's sudsy, it's slippery, and it's fast. Getting hit by it won't just deal damage, it'll also make you sudsy for a short period of time, causing you to slide across the arena. Another similar new move of Sproink's is Chuck the Bucket, but it trades status affliction for straight deadliness. With only a flat second of startup, Chuck the Bucket displays a warning for its hurt box as soon as its startups begins, and it is massive. I mean, a bucket is a lot larger than a bar of soap, so kinda makes sense. Instead of directly targeting a team member at the end of its startup, Sproink simply throws the bucket in a straight line in front of him. Watch out and sprint out of the way as soon as you see that orange line, because Sproink's projectiles don't despawn until they reach the edge of the arena. Get him down to 70% HP, and Sproink will add a new move to his arsenal, Hot Water. Man, you are never gonna guess what this one does. Sproink charges into the nearest bath and uses his fire to, well, make the water hot. More specifically, he turns it into lava, because that totally makes sense. It's not hard to avoid entering the lava at all, but you need to make sure that you don't. Being in the lava will drain a flat 10 whole HP from you every half second. It's insanely deadly, and I can't stress enough how much you need to avoid it. If you get hit by hogwash, don't even think about moving your control pad in the general direction of a lava tub. Unless you're hogwash, though, avoiding the lava is trivial at best. If it really bothers you, you can walk up to the wooden faucet spout things on the edge of each bath and hold A to fill the bath with cool water and get rid of the lava. That'll leave you vulnerable while you hold A, though, so that's honestly the most dangerous part of hot water. Ignore the temptation to cool off the baths, and you'll be fine. Sprank will use his ultimate move, Squealing Boil, when you get him down to 20% health. He'll charge for 3 seconds before causing all 4 baths to erupt and fill with lava. Attack him during and after his charge to trigger a chance, leaving him immobile and vulnerable for an extended period of time. Take this chance to finish him off. I really don't get the whole bath gimmick for this fight. They're just so easy to avoid in my opinion. If you're struggling with the baths, please share your experience in the comments. When defeated, Sproink will either drop a Sproink Rope or Sproink Bucket, so make sure to pick that star up before exiting the mission. You also have a chance to get a bonus one while you clear the mission, but I'm three chapters into the game and still haven't gotten a single jackpot treasure, so I wouldn't count on it. Sproink's mission only has a 10% chance of dropping the Sproink item that's common for your version, and a 4% chance of dropping the Sproink item that's rare for your version. So there's really not a big chance that you'll get a bonus Sproink item from this mission at all. Sure, you can sell the Sproink rope or bucket that you get for a nice 60 Oni orbs, but they've got a much better use than that. For 3 Sproink ropes, 2 Sproink buckets, 4 Eerie Essences, and 830 Oni orbs, yeah, this isn't easy to make, you can craft a pig bucket. The pig bucket is a rank 2 equipment item that gives an absolutely insane bonus of 65 defense. That's just a crazy amount of defense. If you're having trouble staying alive, get this thing and you won't have any trouble anymore. If you're having difficulty defeating Sproink, I recommend using one tank, two healers, and playing as a ranger. A tank is extremely useful in this fight, as Sproink has many targeted attacks that will all be drawn away from you. I recommend using No Way since he's quite decent and you start the game off with him anyway. Sproink is Fire Element, which means he's weak to Water Element. You have a couple Water Element choices, but I've taken a look at and tested all of them, and the strongest one is definitely Droplet. Befriend Droplet in Blossom Heights by selecting the Damp Towel mission and defeating Yokai until you befriend him. I'll have a detailed guide on befriending Yokai out soon, but the important thing to note here is that you can kill unlimited Yokai in the Damp Towel mission without causing it to end, and Droplet appears in it. Droplet has a powerful ranged water attack, and his ultimate move is not only extremely powerful, but water element as well. So hang back, spam fully charged attacks, and let your allies support you as you carry them. Dump all your Oni Orbs into Droplet's levels, and you'll be fine. 
Thanks for watching! If this video helped you out, make sure to subscribe for video guides on every boss in Yokai Watch Blasters. Leave a like so that other people can notice this video as well. Follow me on Twitter at 101leafy and join the partner Discord with over 1600 members at discord.gg slash 101leafy for updates on the newest videos and live streams and to talk Yokai Watch with me and other people. Links to both are in the description.